Hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's Fish Room. In today's video, feeding tips from yours truly. Grab a healthy snack and beverage and stand by. All right, fishy folks, today's video is gonna be on feeding tips, how I feed my fish in my fish room, and uh, just some tips and tricks I've learned over the years of keeping fish and breeding for profit. Before I get started, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button, gently boop the notification bell, and of course, check out my website, michaelsfishroom.com. I am still shipping, even though it's cold. Uh, I would prefer to ship express, and that's where my live arrival guarantee applies. However, if you don't want to buy fish and pay for express shipping, I will ship priority. However, there is no live arrival guarantee. All right, folks, that's enough about that. So feeding tips and tricks, I guess, is what we're going to call this. And uh, this is just, from my experience, what I've learned, what works best. Now, the key to any healthy fish is good quality food and a variety of it. I've talked a thousand times about different high quality foods, North Fin, uh, Cobalt as an example, uh, Ocean Nutrition, frozen food, live foods, whatever you want to feed, it should always be high quality. I'm not a fan of the big box store brands, Marineland API. Uh, I'm not really a fan of Tetra, although I know plenty of people, Scott, who feeds Tetra and his fish, their fish look great. So personally, i not a big fan. Anywho. Uh, variety is the key to life and it's also the key to healthy fish so in a typical say three-day period I might feed something like this uh, ocean nutrition brine shrimp plus flakes in the morning and then in the afternoon I may come down and feed this smartemia to everybody now this smartemia is like dust it's really fry food but guppies and and folks this kind of applies to guppies you can apply it to other fish but I know guppies and that's kind of what I'm talking about so if you have big African cichlids this may not apply because they're not gonna really eat this smartemia I digress so a guppy even an adult guppy is gonna gobble this stuff up because it's delicious and healthy uh, even though it's pretty much like dust so like I said, in the morning, we may go with the brine shrimp plus flakes. Of course, I'm going to crumble it up so it's small enough for guppies. Um, so it, you can see here, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to try to do this. You can see here the size of the flake, right? But what I would do is I would just crumble it up like this and make it kind of fine powder and feed it to the fish. And that's it. Now, uh, morning and then afternoon and then at night i would feed something else uh i might go with a north Fin pellet or uh, a new life spectrum pellet um or i might go back to this it really depends on you know kind of what's going on now in a lot of my tanks i have plecos also so the thing about plecos is that they don't really do great on super high protein food and all of my foods are high protein for the guppies for fast growth and healthy growth so I try not to let uh, too much food sink to the bottom and as soon as I'm done feeding the guppies I go back and I feed the plecos now uh, plecos get green beans at least every four feedings fresh fresh canned green beans French style you want the French cut um, I, it doesn't matter to me if there's salt, there's no salt, there's sea salt, I don't really care. My guppies and my plecos don't mind the salt. In fact, if there's a little salt, it's probably better for the guppies in the tank, but I don't care. Take a can, simply open it and drop them in. I've done videos on feeding green beans. People blow it way out of proportion, make it a big deal, it's not a big deal. Just simply drop them in the tank. Most plecos will eat whatever you drop in the tank in a 24-hour period. Uh, people ask me how often should I take, if I, if I feed fresh green beans, how often do I take the, you know, when do I take the leftovers out? I, I don't know, because I never have leftovers, but I would say if they haven't eaten it in 24 to 36 hours, you may want to take it out, all right? So every four feedings, they get this. In between that, what do they get? Well, they get what drops to the bottom of the tank, obviously, but I also feed other high-quality variety foods. I never... 
I try never to feed the same food twice in a row. So as an example, uh, in the morning they might get green beans. Um, I usually don't feed them when I do my middle, middle of the day feeding. Now, let me just preface this middle of the day feeding thing. I have an auto water change system. If I overfeed and there's an excess amount of poop, it doesn't matter because my auto water change system will uh, help any of the water parameters that are getting out of control. So if you don't have an auto water change system and don't want to change excess water, you don't really need to feed three times a day. You actually don't even need to feed every day, but that's a whole nother video, which is a good idea. I got to write that down. Anyway, uh, so the other thing with feeding, which I should probably tell you as well, is the more you feed, the more you, if your fish are going to poop, the more they poop, the more ammonia is going to be in the water. Now. If you start to overfeed heavily right away, that may disrupt your cycle, but if you increase your feedings gradually, that'll give time for the beneficial bacteria to catch up to whatever ammonia is being produced in the tank and process it through to nitrates in 24 hours, which is how the, the nitrogen cycle works. Okay, enough about that lesson. So, plecos, four, every four times they get this. Then they might get kelp wafers from Northfin. They might get Northfin Bug Pro. Now I know I said most plecos don't do well on high protein. I do drop Bug Pro in for them once or twice a week, especially if uh, it has just rained or I know a storm is coming because that drop in pressure typically will trigger spawning. Pro tip right there, folks, pro tip. Uh, so you got the, the kelp wafers, you got the cat scratchers from uh, Extreme, and I really like the cobalt shrimp and veggie pellets. I, I can't talk enough about that shrimp and veggie pellet. I really like it for the plecos, and guppies go after it too. Uh, and that's kind of how I feed plecos. Now plecos, you can feed all kinds of fresh vegetables too. I've done peppers, I've done watermelon, cantaloupe, uh, of course lettuce and spinach and kale and all that those crappy leafy green vegetables but um they'll eat quite a variety of of fruits and vegetables uh cucumbers and zucchini of course uh when i have a cucumber that that has gone a little soft in my refrigerator i peel that bad boy i cut it up i use the i don't have it here the pleco feeder that i got from my boy keith at kge aquatics uh and i just screw it on there hang it in the tank come back 12 hours later it's gone and that's how I feed plecos and guppies now I'm lucky I have a small YouTube channel a great personality and companies send me free food all the time if you can't afford to buy you know 15 varieties of food for your guppies I probably have 30 different fish foods over there um, pick two or three small cans and go with that also, if you have like a couple people that you can buy food with together, the larger volumes are typically less expensive. Um, I love the Northfin Flake. Hold on. You'd think I'd be prepared. I love the Northfin Flake, but you know, this tub is really not for a, one person that has, you know, one or two fish tanks. I have 61 fish tanks and it takes me six months to go through this. Now if I fed it every day, maybe I would go through it faster. Obviously I go through it faster, but I don't, right? I feed this, I don't know, once every five or six times, but this is great high quality flake food from Northfin. This is the kelp uh, flake. They also have, they have a couple other varieties. The community flake is their three varieties mixed together, which I think is kelp, uh, krill, and they have a, a cichlid, I forget. Anywho, if you have four or five other fish keepers, maybe your fish club, you could buy, you know, one or two of these tubs uh, and then split it. Put it in Ziploc bags, put it in the freezer, and uh, then you, you have the high quality food that's not going to go bad. That's another thing. When you open food, you should write the date on it. I've, I, I've gave you that pro tip before, but I always write the date. That's not true. I always try to remember to write the date. And when I do, I know how long it, uh, how long the food has been open. Now, 
quick another pro tip is make sure your food is closed tight especially if it's in a fish room or near your fish tank where most people keep their food because it's a little more humid and that's what's going to cause the food to go bad all right uh let's talk about fry feeding fry now <clears throat> when i take the the flake and i crush it up that's so everybody in the tank gets a piece but if i'm feeding a specific tank of fry i might use uh this dr basilier's baby nano that keith sent me now again you guys know the story this is great food it's real high quality but what the hell is this my fingers don't even reach the food so pro tip from my boy keith grab a deli cup you know i love the deli cup put in the deli cup and of course custom packaging for mike um when i'm feeding fry i will definitely overfeed the tank because they're little um and they don't swim great and if you're in a big 20 gallon tank and you're a little itty bitty cutty fry there's a lot of swimming to do to get the food so you want to overfeed a little bit there um let's talk about live food real quick i do the the live brine shrimp i use the zis hatchery uh it's just big enough where i can feed almost all of my tanks uh with one hatch um, i have two of them I'll be doing a video on that probably over the winter uh, when I redo my fish room a little bit. I'm going to set up a station for them. Uh, but also you can feed um, other, you know, micro worms, super worms, whatever the worms are called, banana worms. Uh, they're all good. I don't do much live food because the wife would really frown upon it. Uh, another great thing to feed is frozen food. Now, some people, I've heard it and I've seen it on Facebook. Oh, you shouldn't feed blood worms too often. It's a, it's a treat. It's really not a treat. It's food. You can feed it as often as you like to fish that are good with high protein. Uh, I like frozen cyclops. Speaking of cyclops, I love the freeze-dried cyclops from uh, uh, San Francisco Bay Burn. You know you've heard me talk about it. There are going to be links down below for most of this stuff. Some of them will be Amazon affiliate links. Some of them will be just a link to either KGE Aquatics or Super Cichlids. Uh, both, both great companies to buy from. Um, frozen food, frozen cyclops, brine shrimp, uh, and bloodworms are some of my go-tos. Now, I do feed that also a couple times a week but i just i don't really go over it too much so i've done a video on frozen cyclops i'll put a link up here for it it's really not that difficult to feed frozen food so i think that does it for the uh feeding tips and tricks from yours truly hope you guys liked it uh leave a comment down below as to any feeding tips and tricks you have have a great day folks and welcome back to Michael's fish room there's no light and I'm getting communications I'll be back hiya fishy folks and welcome back to Michael's fish room today's video feeding tips from Michael from Michael's that's why can't I speak I I don't know Before I get started, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. That's yeah. The other a good another great thing to food is f oh. 